Hi, everyone. I'm Catherine Anaya. Welcome to the Women's Eye Podcast, where I chat with inspiring women who are making a difference and changing lives. This episode is brought to you by Casco Financial Group in Phoenix, Arizona. Catherine Scrivano is the president of Casco Financial Group. She started her business to help people create the financial strength they need to achieve their dreams. And she believes you don't have to be wealthy to be wise. Always great advice. And Catherine Scrivano is my guest today. Catherine, always great to have you here on the podcast with your money building or building money segment. We call it both here. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks. It's great being here. I appreciate the opportunity. Absolutely. Well, you know, it's hard to believe that we're already nearing the end of 2022. I feel like this year has just flown by. Would you agree? Uh, absolutely. They all do, but this one seems <laughs> especially quick. Yes. And so since we are nearing the end, it's always a good time to end it on a smart note by getting your finances in tip top shape for the start of a new year. So what exactly does that entail, Catherine? Why is it so important to do that? You know, right now is a, a good time to be thinking about year end finances, opportunities, planning challenges and things that we can be doing right now before we get so overwhelmed and consumed with holidays. So I suggest that everybody just kind of pause for a moment. I'm looking for that app on my phone that allows me to time travel. I haven't found it yet. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to make sure that I don't miss any opportunities to take action before the year end that I may look back in January and wish I had. Yes, that's called being smart and being <laughs> organized. So let's break down the important financial areas that you believe we should tackle, starting with taxes. What ways can we begin to get our taxes in order now before next year's tax season? And I know a lot of people don't like to look that far ahead, but it really is important. Yeah, and it's right around the corner. And again, the, the year end uh, sometimes closes the door on opportunities. The first place that we start was really just projecting what your income may be in 2022 and in 2023. Sometimes there's opportunities to defer income to the next year or take deductions in this year. Uh, a variety of things that can save you some taxes depending on the year in which you act. Uh, you can be looking at your investment portfolios. Believe it or not, plenty of people have gotten gains this year. And sometimes, especially in a market like we've been having, there's opportunities to sell and accept some losses that offset those gains. There might be a tax benefit that makes that worth doing. Um, any securities that have been sold this year, you are going to unless they were in a IRA or similar account, you're going to have to account for the cost basis, what you paid for them when you file your tax return next year. So now's as good a time as any to start establishing what those cost basis are. Um, and then tracking donations to charity. I am constantly delighted with how generous our community is. Yeah. And again, when we look at income taxes, there can be implications for having made those donations. So make sure you're on top of those and have everything accounted for. Yeah, it's so important to be you know, on top of things and organized so you aren't caught off guard. Another big area to consider uh, making adjustments to is with retirement. What are sure. some ways that we can maximize what we currently have? Well, the first thing is, if you are able, make sure that you're maxing out your contributions, and maybe that means catch-ups to retirement plans based on your age. Uh, on the other hand, on the other side of that, if you are over age 72 and have IRAs or qualified plans, perhaps a 401k, you're required to take money out of those plans before the end of the year. The consequence of not doing that is a 50% penalty, very onerous. So please, before December 31st, make sure that you have uh, taken distributions that you're required. Um, some people are thinking about claiming social security and consider the income tax consequence. And uh, as many of you probably know, there's a big hike in social security benefits coming in 2023. So if you've not yet claimed, start being strategic and thinking about when the best time to claim would be. Well, you know, we've talked in the past about uh, periodically reviewing our investments. So why is year end the 
the, I, I don't want to say better, but a really good time to do that. It, it is a great time because you've got the full year's experience. And this has been an exciting year. Uh, that's the word that I'm going to choose to use right now is excitement. <laughs> uh, but you know, it does give us a chance to review our investment goals, the strategies that we've implemented, and look, perhaps there are opportunities for rebalancing the, the models that we've created. And I think it's a really great time to confirm our tolerance for risk. We've had the experience of the downs and the ups and the dramatic swings. And now's a good time to check in and kind of get it out of our head and into our stomach and say, how did that feel? We recognize opportunities in market fluctuation. It's always great for accumulators to be buying when things are low but looking at our statements can sometimes be painful. So it's a great time for reality check or a confirmation that we know what we're doing, we're on the right path and we're gonna continue. You know, we talked recently about long-term health insurance and life insurance and end of the year, uh, I know you think is a really good time to make sure what we have, uh, sure about what we have, even with homeowners and auto insurance is aligned with any life changes that we've had. Um, can you expand on that a little bit? Well, thinking about our homeowners insurance, you know, we've seen, uh, especially here locally, we've seen tremendous increases in the value of our homes. We want to make sure that we have adequate insurance coverage in place, and that in includes the liability policies that are inherent with our auto and homeowners insurance. So we just want to make sure that our coverages are appropriate. Um, this is a very common time for open enrollment in employers health coverage plans. So we want to make sure that we've made the right choices there. Um, looking at Medicare open enrollment, again, seeing if our supplements are appropriate. Also, this is the time when people find that they have remaining balances in a flexible spending account through their employer. We want to make sure you use those. So you know, now's the time to buy the glasses or make the doctor's appointments or whatever uh, before the end of the year. And remember, you're not the only one doing it. So if you're looking to get an appointment, you're competing with everybody else trying to spend their flexible spending account. So start now. This is true. And since we're talking about life changes, there are some milestone ages, you say, that we really should focus on because of yeah. how we can impact our finances. Can you talk about those ages and, and what adjustments we might want to consider? Well, you know, uh, significant birthdays um, create significant opportunities. We just want to make sure that you're aware uh, if this year you turned 50 or perhaps next year you will be turning 50, it opens the door to allow you to contribute more money to your IRAs and some employer uh, retirement accounts. Age 55 allows you to take money from a 401k plan without a penalty if you retired. If you are uh, 59 and a half, you can take distributions from your IRA without a penalty. If you're going to be between 62 and 70, start thinking about Social Security claiming benefits uh, and strategies at 65. That's when you apply for Medicare. And as I mentioned earlier, if you're age 72, you're going to want to take those required minimum distributions from your IRA. So maybe you didn't have those birthdays this year, but will next year. This is a great time to identify the opportunities and decide how you'll respond. Yes, it's always important to be prepared. A lot can happen in a year, as we know, and sometimes we forget just how much can change. So what are some life changes we may have made that we shouldn't overlook when it comes to our finance oh, and why? You know, one thing that I think about is when people move, what a what a huge undertaking that is. And we are so busy figuring out, you know, how to move our stuff that we forget the financial consequences of that move. So again, before the end of the year, think a little bit more broadly about some of the financial uh, implications of moving your home. Perhaps you sold your home or a business, other real estate. There's um, some moves that are going to be required as a result of those. Uh, did you transfer assets from yourself to another person? Did you refinance your home earlier this year when interest rates were much lower? 
people were refinancing like crazy and their impacts there. Uh, did you change jobs? If you did, be sure you have not left behind your retirement plan without documenting that it's there. I just read a statistic this morning about the many trillions of dollars that are left behind in employer plans that people have forgotten. Can you imagine? Especially yes. if you change jobs frequently, it, it can happen. Did you get married? Um, we have a couple in our practice right now that are considering the effect of getting married and the potential that their combined income is going to increase his Medicare premiums. Mm. So there's an example of great planning beforehand. On the other hand, I went to a wedding of a client a couple of years ago. Uh, that wedding took place near the end of December. And I was in the receiving line. I, you know, she accepted my congratulations and then kind of whispered under her breath that he insisted on getting married before the end of the year because it would save money on taxes. The thing is, People I knew do that, <laughs> but I knew he was wrong. Mm -hmm. it, it, he, it was actually an incorrect assumption on his part. That didn't seem like the time to bring it up. <laughs> but on the other hand, it's a reminder that, you know, consult with a qualified professional for those kinds of major decisions. I, you know, I'm as big a romantic as anyone, and I would encourage you to get married because you want to make that commitment and be married. But there are financial implications, and sometimes timing can make things a little more pleasant. Um, yeah. So, anyway, talk to a professional before you're making tax motivated decisions based on the calendar make sure you have good information yes um, knowledge is power <laughs> uh, we also you know pause and, and reflect on the year maybe you ended a marriage you might have added to your family through birth or adoption you might have lost a loved one and received a gift or inheritance all of those things can uh, can have financial impacts and again some decisions might be made this year that shouldn't be postponed to next year, or you may decide intentionally to postpone them. And so since we're talking about love, uh, finally, my last question, and most importantly, you suggest that we review financial areas that involve the people we love. Uh, can you tell me more about that? Yeah, this is a great time. And sometimes uh, family conversations, spending time with them during the holidays will stimulate some thoughts. Um, you might want to be contributing to education accounts. My favorite form of gift, uh, nobody needs more toys. They need money in their college funds. Uh, good time to review and fund trusts. Um, think about your beneficiary designations. As I mentioned, if you, I just got off the phone with a client who recently got married and we talked through the uh, potential changing of beneficiary to include her new husband. Um, if you're making charitable contributions again get those in there right now and we talked a moment earlier about required minimum distributions from uh, your qualified plans if you're age 72 there's a great great tax saving strategy that allows you to contribute to charities directly from your ira and not pay tax on it so pursue that if you're charitably inclined and perhaps gifting to family members. Sometimes it makes sense to spread that over multiple years rather than all in one. So again, these are all thoughts that you should be talking about with your financial professional, making your plans and easing into the holidays with just nothing but enjoyment. Well, we have some work to do if we haven't done it already. Important work though, that's going to help us end the year and kick off the new year on the right financial foot. So thank you so much, Catherine, as always, for sharing your uh, very wise advice. I appreciate it. Well, I, I appreciate the opportunity. Again, I wish everyone a happy, happy holiday. Our social media posting today is about um, starting conversations with your grandparents mm -hmm. during the holidays. Mm -hmm. So have a look for Casco Financial and social media. We've got some real fun stuff right now. So I, I hope everyone's holidays are just wonderful. Yes, wonderful. There's a lot going on, but really we just need to hone on and hone in on those things that um, really are crucial moving forward. So thank you, Catherine.
And by the way, you can learn more about Catherine Scrivano by going to our website, thewomenseye.com. I also want to let you know that The Women's Eye has two books. The first is called 20 Women Changemakers. You can shop for it wherever you buy books and at changemakersbook.com. And we have a new book. Our newest book is called 20 Women Storytellers. It's out now, and you can find out more about that at womenstorytellersbook.com. And that's going to do it for this episode of The Women's Eye Podcast. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm Catherine Anaya. Until next time, remember, it's the world as we see it.